this is not a, a, a behind-the-scenes exercise. It was done in broad daylight. We saw the multitude of people lining up. So somebody in government must have given this approval. Somebody in government knows exactly what these people are doing. I so saw somewhere um, an impression that um, it's about investment. You can start to invest at 25. So how the villager, where there is even no internet connectivity, you know, in the far north, be able now to begin to invest and to be able to trade uh, globally? Now, I don't know if you are aware of this, by 2050, statistically, the population of the elderly people, of which the definition of elderly is 60 and above, and maybe now they want to bring it to 55, it will be more than the children who will be on. In the next, in 2050, that is the next 20 years, they will be more than the children who are under 20 years. That means we'll be having such a bomb. It is a bomb, time bomb, waiting. Do you think our government, besides our families, are they ready to handle that? I know you've been around the world and you've seen how governments prepare healthcare for the population. They have shelters, they even have uh, rescue centers for them, those who have no families. Um, and especially Mamboya healthcare, mm. because most of these over 50, especially immediately you, you retire, you start on cocktail or medications. I have pressure, I have diabetes, I have what, all these problems, they are, that's the time you get them. And that's the time our government will withdraws the NHIF, which, anyway, which never worked anyway. So, do you think they are ready? No, ready because uh, definitely government is not ready. Because, you, you, first of all, you will have to start with even just enacting that law, the Senior Citizens Act, yes. so that then it becomes part and parcel of our legal framework. So we start from working from there. Exactly. Yeah. So, once you have a government of the day that is insensitive to the plight of, of its own society, its own people, I, talking of 2050, that's a, like a, a pipe dream. Um, <laughs> So maybe now it, the debate really needs to go back to the uh, to, to families and say, okay, how prepared are we to take care of our, our elderly at their retirement? Because the government of the day is not even putting any programs. Remember, this is also part of the what we call the affirmative action, yeah. in, in, and it's there in the constitution. Yeah. So the government ought to be able to put certain programs, certain policies in place. And I think the first, the starting point will be to enact this law. The Senior Citizens Act, pass it, and let it be part of the of part of our legal framework. We can budget on it, how to implement on it, so that in in, in every budget year, at least we can factor in some cost into uh, using that law. But in the absence of that, I don't think we can talk about preparedness when we are not even addressing the problem at the moment. That, for me, is where the issue is. So, thank you about that. I hope our government is hearing. I hope our parliamentarians are hearing. I hope our citizens are here and who is responsible for that. It's the people you elected, you woke up, you are pushed even by wheelchair to be taken there. These are the people who cannot formulate a law that will get you a wheelchair when you are not able to walk. So the people you elect. Like Wakili says, we have parliament buildings, but in real fact, we have no parliamentarians. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> Wakili, mm -hmm. there's something else just as we round mm -hmm. up. There is this world coin. Uh, the other day, <laughs> yeah. two days ago, <laughs> we found lots of Kenyans from every corner of the country. I was so shocked to see a lady that I know, she's around 80, 70 something years, talking about it coming all the way, I wouldn't say where, to come to be screened her eyes by people that she does not even know just to get 7,000. Mm. She doesn't even know the consequences. And these are foreigners who are coming to bring this ideology and working on it. And for you, you were saying, when even investors who are coming actually to invest to do something like creating jobs, they are not given the opportunity. But someone coming to screen, to get information from your citizen, a whole sovereign government, government of the people by the people for the people of Kenya, a republic of Kenya, you find thousands of people in the middle of the city of Kenya, next to Supreme Court, next parliament <laughs> building, lines of you. Next to government. office of the president. Next to office of the president <laughs> is true. And no one is questioning this. But we are busy harassing, you know, regular demonstrators who are saying food, food, food. Mm. Surely, 
Do you think Kenyans are safe? Do you think someone, there's some, you know, there's supposed to be responsible for protecting Kenyans. Are we protected, really? Well, I don't really think... this woman <coughs> here saying, I would rather have my eyes information taken, an old lady of almost 80 years, I get because of poverty, I get something to eat. Now this is an elderly person who is doing such an act, having traveled all the way Alilala Kuja and bus the whole night. The Akuja Hapa, she was crying, I need to be screened. The only part of Sava because of Jack. What do you think? Are we safe? Are Kenyans protected? Well, uh, first of all, you cannot undertake such an activity without government approval. Uh, this is not a, a, a behind the scenes exercise. It was done in broad daylight. We saw the multitude of people lining up. So somebody in government must have given this approval. Somebody in government knows exactly what these people are doing. To many Kenyans, I don't understand what they want to use this data for. But of course, because of the poor situation people are in, the financial uh, stress that people are in, distress people are in, to be given 7,000 just for someone to take your, your bio data, your iris, it doesn't matter. But I think we should be worried more about how this data will be used. I've seen clips where people are saying that um, they want to prove that we are human beings. I mean, come on. <laughs> when did we ever doubt the fact that we are, we are human beings? Do we look like animals? Well, we could be animals, but at least of human, uh, human descent. So I've seen videos going around. So the question really, I think, Lucy, is how did these people get authority authorization in the first instance to undertake this kind of activity. And we have also seen um, um, uh, contradictions from government officials. Uh, you see cabinet uh, minister Owalo saying it's okay. Way back in April, the office of the data uh, commissioner got wind of the practices of this entity and did a letter to them to clarify what they were trying to do. Information uh, available to the data commissioner is that within the existing legal framework today there is no um, provision mm. in law that that organization had negated. There has been correspondence between the office of the data commissioner and that entity. What is okay? He didn't come to explain why, why we are doing this. The, then Kindiki Kiture on the other hand says no. He stopped that activity and all other similar activities so that you don't wait until there's a, a similar activity. So we are looking at this in terms of the current problem in Kajedo, but also um, the potential uh, Spiro, uh, uh, Spiro counties. This is not right. So you can see government is even confused. They don't even know. We don't know why they are harvesting this data and we don't know how they're going to use them in the future. So uh, we have a government that is not coordinated, that's allowing strangers to come and uh, take biodata of Kenyans, biodata of your citizen, and they're not explaining why. So even when Wallo say that he, uh, there, there's nothing wrong with that, he should explain further, okay, why, why, what is this project? What is this world coin thing? You know, if you say that it's about investment, because I saw somewhere um, an impression that um, it's about investment, you can start to invest at 25. So how is the villager, where there is even no internet connectivity, you know, in the far north, be able now to begin to invest and to be able to trade uh, globally? It's a lie. This, this is really... This, is a this lady who was crying there, is yeah. coming all the way from north to just be given 7,000. But yeah. she says... For her, she doesn't even know about the trading. Na uliambi wa nini hasa inafanyika leo? Na kuna 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 information 
inaweza kutumika vibaya acha kwa ngumu kama tafadhali sisi sikuishi nataka tu pesa acha sikuishi pesa na saidia watu acha kwa juu kama kuna pesa ngumu yes unaweza waambia aje vile wametufungia sasa amemwambia anasema ile nyumbani lakini sisi na ngojea tu mawazo yetu tu lakini unaelewa ni nini hasa? Unaelewa ni nini hii ambayo umekuja kufanya? Nimesikia basi ameisha. Nimekuja tu na nini? Natafuta ndo lakini nimesikia ameisha. Eh. Lakini unajua inaitwa aje? Kitu ambayo inaendelea? Sijui ni coin sama. Sawa. She knows about the getting the 7000 yeah. challenge. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And but also you can see how this uh indignifies our people. So even if they get that 7000, you factor in maybe she borrowed even transport because she probably did not have she money. Did. She said that. She said that, yeah. eh? So now she has to go and pay back that transport. She has to pay another transport back. So how much will she remain with? And how will that feed her? And how will that sustain her? So this is really embarrassing in my view uh, to the government of our government. And I think they really need to get to the bottom of this and uh, get the facts to the people of Kenya. Otherwise, we are being used and misused and abused. Thank you so much, Wakili, for your time and for talking to Kenyans. A lot of them who didn't know about the constitution and how it came about and what rights they have and the work of the parliamentarians. And the poor Kenyans, you vote people for wrong reasons. The reason for uh, voting your member of parliament is to represent you. What else? To oversight to government oversight, and to legislate and, and to, to pass, yes. To do the laws for you that will protect you. So the Kenyan senior citizen, you are sitting down there. No laws have been formulated by the, by the government, by the parliament to protect you. You got them to blame. Talk to them in your respective areas. Tell them we need that senior bill passed so that we can start preparing you as a country before 2050. Thank you very much. If you have not subscribed yet, please do, because we are bringing these stories for you to understand.